Hi folks, my name is Graham Townsend and just recently I was conducting a clinic in Pennsylvania where I asked one of my students how long was a typical shift for him and he said 45 seconds. I asked him of that 45 seconds how much time does he spend skating and he said 45 seconds and it's interesting through my unprecedented access to information in the NHL I came across some very interesting information. We, we spend a lot of time studying tapes of the best players in the game, trying to figure out what they're doing to make themselves the best players in the game. And it was very interesting to find out that close to 40% of a typical shift, a high point producing forward like a Sidney Crosby, for example, spends close to 40% of their shift in a two-foot glide just trying to get into position. All right, The rest of the shift is done accelerating either forward, stopping and starting, changing direction. And, and even cruising speed. Very little time is actually spent skating top speed. Now the interesting fact is 4% of a shift is spent in, in a one-on-one -on -one battle for a puck, for example, or for positioning on the ice. Yet so much time is spent in, in practice doing battle drills or doing flow drills and things of that nature when really we should be spending our time working on our skating and our, our individual skills, our puck handling skills, our passing skills, and of course our scoring skills. I never like to say shooting skills because shooting to me implies just simply getting the puck to an area. I like to really emphasize scoring skills. Now when I asked this youngster how much time he spent working on his skating specifically, he said very little time. And it just does, I just don't understand why there's not more time and more emphasis being spent on skating skills. Of course I'm somewhat biased, but the reason I am is because my skating skills were very weak, even though I was a number two recruited player in the country in my recruiting year. My skating skills were very weak. It was through constant repetition and constant training with a, with a man named Paul Vincent in Boston that I actually became a better skater and became good enough to play in the National Hockey League. And a lot of people sort of overlooked that fact, and it's unfortunate because this is the reason why many players do make it to that level. It's because of their skating. Not enough time is being spent in practice, going to hockey schools and things of that nature. Not enough time is being spent perfecting the art of skating. It's very similar to, to uh, Tom Brady, for example, neglecting his throwing technique or some delivering the ball in, in the hands of a Randy Moss. It wouldn't make any sense if he failed to focus on that particular skill. And I know for a fact that NFL quarterbacks work on the simple uh, you know, two or three step, step drop back, as they say. This is a skill that they have to learn. Yet it seems very simple, but yet they have to practice it day in and day out. I know for a fact Tiger Woods spends hours and hours learning how to putt a golf ball into a little hole. I mean, this skating in hockey is like putting is to golf. And yet we don't spend very much time perfecting it. At my hockey schools, we take every skating and skill and we break it down into its, in, into its individual parts. And by doing that, we're able to, to strictly a, a identify the player's weaknesses and strengths. And what we do is we break down those weaknesses, we attack those weaknesses through a series of drills that I've developed over the years, and we build that player back up and eventually link all the drills together, performing, allowing the player to perform at a much higher level. This takes time, obviously. It takes time to explain the drills. It takes time to drill the players. But it's through constant repetition that our players improve. And we've proven it countless times in the National Hockey League where we've taken players that no other, nobody else wanted because they may have, a, may have had a flaw in their skating ability or whatnot. And we understood that we could take a player with, let's say, a great amount of character, maybe not a great skater, but great character, and we could teach that player how to skate. And that's exactly what we've done with several of our players who now are functional, top-end players in the National Hockey League that other teams passed up. This is what I want to do for your child. I want to see your child maximize their potential as a player and as a person. Not every child is going to realize their dream of playing in the NHL or playing college hockey, but perhaps their dream may be to make the varsity high school hockey team. Well, the high school hockey coach is going to have 50 kids at tryouts. He's not going to have the time to tell your child what specifically your child needs to work on. So why wait to that point where, where the child fails? Why not fix the problem now before it becomes an issue later on in life? We emphasize teaching. And in, in, in the process, we build the player up to a point where they become a proficient and functional and contributing player to their team.